The Coindesk Spotlight is brought to you by Nexo, the place to earn on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more. FaZe Clan is one of the most recognizable brands in esports and gaming. They're aiming to go public with a SPAC merger at a reported $1 billion evaluation. And now they want to get into crypto. Earlier, I spoke to FaZe Clan Chief Strategy Officer Kai Henry on how they plan to merge gaming with the metaverse. Have a listen. I think that fundamentally the way games are set up, um, it's set up at like a metaverse, right? So like you're, yeah, you're yeah, gamers are buying skins, they're buying avatars, they're buying, you know, uh, different elements and, and accessories from that game. Um, the only difference is, you know, now in the future, you're gonna be able to take those same elements and move them around from game to game, platform to platform, metaverse to metaverse. Um, so gamers are innately positioned to move forward in the future here, right? So tell me a bit about what FaZe Clan is and how you guys plan to interact and use Web3. Sure. I mean, FaZe Clan is um, uh, one of the biggest uh, lifestyle esports and gaming companies in the world. So, um, you know, uh, the, the roots of it are in, uh, you know, traditional gaming. Um, and then the lifestyle of gaming after that expanded. So there's professional esports, which we have um, over 40 um, professional esports players and, um, and, and different teams that compete um, on, you know, in esports as franchisable, you know, in franchise leagues. Um, and then we have another 40 plus um, gamers that are content creators, right? So they're not competing day to day in different leagues. They are creating content online, they're streaming, they're on Twitch, they're on YouTube. Um, and so, yeah, so we're, you know, we're half esports, half half gaming and, and gaming creators. Um, How big do you think crypto will figure in the business going forward in the future? I think it'll play a major part. Um, again, everything from a transaction, we're, we're a company of creators that are born on the, from the internet, right? So anything that's digital, including currency and, um, and goods, digital goods, um, you know, we, we, there's no paradigm shift for, for our creators and our community and our audience um, when it comes to that, right? So I think that crypto is going to play a huge part in everything we do moving forward. And what can you tell us uh, about how you're integrating with crypto right now? Right now we're just positioning. I think we're watching, we're being very, uh, you know, there's been some hiccups um, just an influencer culture overall as far as like rug pulls, you know, with NFTs and stuff like that, right? And so I think that um, NFTs overall right now in the gaming community is not the, you know, it's not the best term. Um, we're in a bit of a bear market. We're also in a bear market, but, um, you know, I think that, yeah, I think that, you know, everything will be, everything will be just fine. And, and you know, overall, you know, we're, we, Phase Clan has an opportunity to really be the the bridge and the freeway you have a for, for with uh, Sandbox. Yeah, we have a partner. Yeah, we've yeah what we're, can you tell we're us about that, not much, but we've been working. Me and Rich and Brooke and the Web3 team at Phase, we've been working really hard on what the strategy looks like with Sandbox. We've been very meticulous and mm -hmm. working with their team for months. I'd say close to a year on what what this looks like. So. Um, we're taking it very serious. So there's more to come on that. And when you talk about, like, you know, you kind of hinted at this, sun, the security concerns. I mean, Axie Infinity, really popular play to earn gaming uh, platform, they were hacked by North Korea. Mm. And I mean, that's a legit concern. It, sure. what, what do you What do you have to say about the problems going forward? Yeah, as far as security goes, I mean, the only thing you can do is prepare yourself, right? So like, instead of us being an organization that when um, NFTs were blowing up and, and doing really well out in the marketplace. We didn't just jump and start releasing product because we understood we needed to be responsible with our community and, and find best in class partners. So Sandbox on the metaverse, you know, um, MoonPay as far as transactional safety, right? So it's all about positioning for the long term. Um, so yeah, um, we take it serious. And do you and, see play to earn as a model that you guys will adopt? Um, Yes, but I don't think in the way that it's been, you know, it's been used or, you know, identified as up to this point. I think that play to earn comes in many other ways. There's learn to earn. I think, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do on the educational front, but also like it doesn't have to be tokenized in a certain way. Right. So um, I think you can get value in, in return in many ways. And so 
uh, we're looking to figure out what that what that means. In many ways, you you already have professional gamers who are playing to earn. Mm. So I, I mean, it feels like a natural fit. Yeah, yeah, making money. Yeah, making money. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, that's with the where the content comes in, right? Like one of our things we're really leaning in heavy on is being at the forefront of of taking um, creators that are used to doing user-generated content and helping them transition to user-owned content. Um, and so that's, you know, it takes a while, it takes a lot of thinking, it takes a lot of uh, positioning and, and a different business model, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, what it, explain to me your demographic that you're working with here. Um, as, as far as what? Who, like gaming? Yeah, FaZe Clan, you know, who's using the game? I'm, I mean, in general, our demo is, you know, 13 to 25, heavy male, um, but you know, I think that right now we're thinking of ways to, to open that demo up, right? And, and really, really figure out how to be proactive in, in, in not only signing, you know, people from underrepresented communities, but also um, uh, creating with them and also having them help us create our platforms and our businesses. Um, just investing, investing in, investing in initiatives, investing, you know, investing in strategy and building it from the ground up. I did, I did want to mention this. I, I believe some influencers on the platform of FaZe Clan were, were part of promoting, say, the kids token, which, you know, went down and eventually they were kind of taken off the platform. Where do you see the dangers of that? Um, I don't know. That doesn't, that's not a FaZe Clan thing, but I think overall there's just a danger in general with celebrities and influencers, right? Like a lot of these deals and rug pull type scenarios come in form of a traditional deal that they're used to looking at, right? Where you get paid to promote something on your socials. And so I think now it's less and less um, because there's been education there, but there's always, there's always risk, right? There's always risk to buying into a project that has something, to, you know, uh, a rug pull kind of aspect to it or, you know, being asked to do something by, you know, things that you're unsure of. Um, so I'd just say everyone needs to be careful. We're very, we're very careful. We're very meticulous as an organization and it shows in how we've, you know, been uh, smart in how we roll out our digital goods, okay. right? You know, Web3 is a little wonky right now. When do you think it'll get to the place where, you know, it, people will be using it all the time and what? they will be gaming it, uh, you know? Yeah, I think, I think um, once it's cohesive, I think, you know, the system, the platforms are kind of spread out all over, each, you know, all over the place. It's to, to transact, it's very segmented, right? You have to get a wallet, then you gotta connect your wallet to this platform, and then you gotta buy this type of token for this NFT. So I think that, the, you know, companies right now are really working on creating a cohesive system where you can, you know, uh, where it's more two, one to two clicks instead of five to 10 clicks. Uh, that's, that, you know, and I think that's coming soon. I think that's, you know, three to five years, it'll be, it'll be seamless.